my adorable friends. Can you keep a secret? I can't for secrets. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 small details in movie musicals you missed. Yes, sometimes a little thing can be quite important. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable musical Easter eggs, cameos, and references you might have overlooked when you were tapping your feet and singing along to the great music. Which of these details surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. ABBA Members Show Up Mamma Mia and Mamma Mia Here We Go Again Mamma Mia was of course born out of a stage musical based on the music of the Swedish band ABBA. But while everyone remembers the likes of Meryl Streep and Pierce Brosnan being in the film, many of us didn't notice Bjorn Ulvius and Benny Andersson's appearances. You always knew how to make an entrance. <laughs> I better be dreaming you better not be here. For those who don't know, they're the two Bs in ABBA. And they had small cameos in the 2008 movie and its 2018 sequel. In both cases, Anderson can be seen putting his musical skill to good use on the piano. As for Ulvius, he's a god in the first movie's credits and a professor in the second's graduation scene. It's kind of like getting two for the price of one. The best things in life, the very best things, happen unexpectedly. Number 9. Maria Wears Another Nun's Dress, The Sound of Music Everyone knows that on February 23, 2000, J.Lo wore that green Versace dress to the Grammys. But what most people don't know is that Jerry Halliwell wore the same dress in January of that year. In The Sound of Music, Maria similarly upstages another, but this time, a new nun. As fans know, she reunites with the Von Trapp family in a green dress, and they all sing my favorite things. I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. But what fans might not remember is that earlier in the film, we see a newcomer at the Abbey wearing the exact same piece. Sister Augusta, take our new postulant to the robing room. God bless you, my daughter. Postulants reportedly part with their clothes upon entry to a nunnery. So it stands to reason that the garment was given to Maria. After all, she doesn't seem like the type to steal. Well, I would have made myself a new dress, but there wasn't time. I can make my own clothes. Number 8. A Revolution in Diagon Alley, Les Miserables Reduce, reuse, and recycle is the motto of our times. And it's something that even the big Hollywood studios believe in sometimes. We need as much furniture as you can throw, darling! Throw everything you have! One example seems to be the Diagon Alley set from the first Harry Potter movie. The Wizarding World couldn't be more different from that of revolutionary France and Les Miserables. Yet the production team on the latter film reportedly made their own magic by giving the aforementioned set a little makeover. Red, a world. Indeed, the barricade scene in Les Mis does at least appear to take place on the same backdrop as where Hagrid introduces Harry to the hidden high street. There's where you get your quills and your ink. And over there are all your bits and bobs for doing your wizardry. Number 7. Mia Dolan's Funny Face, La La Land The 2016 film La La Land is an ode to love, music, dance, and Los Angeles. As it turns out, it also pays homage to a whole host of movies and musicals that came before it. There is probably an entire list's worth of references in this movie. Our favorite is definitely the parallel between Mia's shoot on an Art de Triomphe set and Joe's Paris photos in Funny Face. But we'd be remiss not to point out that Seb's spin around the lamppost is a tribute to the great Gene Kelly's Dawn in Singing in the Rain. The sun's in my heart and I'm ready for love. Number 6. A Curtain Dress, Hairspray As Carol Burnett fans will tell you, making a dress out of curtains isn't a new concept. Stop it. I love you. That, that, that gown is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. I saw it in the window and I just couldn't resist it. 
However, her spoof garment was far more obvious than the one Penny Pingleton made in the 2007 film edition of Hairspray. One would have had to pay close attention to the character's decor to notice. But if you did, you might have picked up on the fact that her dress in the final act is crafted from the curtains in her room. That's not the only notable detail in the film, either. In the opening scene, there's a cameo by John Waters, who wrote, directed, and briefly appeared in the 1988 film. Good afternoon, Penny. Feeling better? Getting in touch with your anger? Number 5. The Innocent One, Chicago The cell block tango scene in Chicago is sung by six women accused of crimes as they describe the events that led to their prison sentences. But are they all guilty? Yeah, but did you do it? Uh, not guilty. There are a few details that point to the fact that the Hungarian woman is the innocent one of the group. First, the only English words she speaks are not guilty. Good morning, ladies. You tell him, Second, there's the color symbolism. The rest of the women display a red scarf in their dance, in reference to the lives they took. But the Hungarian's cloth is white, and a spotlight of the same color shines down on her during her solo. Needless to say, it stands in stark contrast to the crimson sea around her. <laughs> Number 4. War, West Side Story there's a lot to see in this classic 1961 musical. Something's coming, I don't know what it is, but it is gonna be great. A modern retelling of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, it replaces the Capulets and Montagues with the Sharks and the Jets. And instead of fair Verona, we lay our scene in New York City's Upper West Side. Of course, there's also the added singing, dancing, and finger snapping. However, there's one clever little Easter egg that's pretty easy to miss. During the Tonight Quintet, you can spot the word war written on a building in the background. It actually spells warehouse, but Ice's body is in the way. We'll be in back of you, boy. Right. You're gonna flatten him good. Whether this was done on purpose or not, it is genius. Back home, little boys don't have war councils. Ah, but they do here. You want me to be an American, don't you? Number 3. The Princess Dress Loincloth, Enchanted This 2007 Disney movie is able to cleverly poke fun at the studio's classic fairy tales while also paying tribute to them. Oh! He knows the song, too? How do you show her you love her? How does she know that you really, really, truly love her? I've never heard this song. And while it's mostly live action, the first part is animated. Naturally, it's filled with a whole host of subtle and overt references to past Disney films. We're sure you caught many of them, but a less obvious one concerns the big troll that tries to eat Giselle. Hey, that's cheating! I'm supposed to eat you! If you look closely, you'll see that he seems to be sporting Belle, Aurora, Cinderella, and Snow White's outfits. We're scared to ask how he got them, but it's probably a good thing Giselle got away. Oh, Giselle! We shall be married in the morning! Number 2. Familiar Faces, In the Heights Like La La Land, In the Heights is chock full of subtle details and Easter eggs. But we have to point out the Christopher Jackson and Lin-Manuel Miranda appearances. Hey, Donna, I run this of course, we came to know them as George Washington and Alexander Hamilton in Hamilton. But they played Benny and Usnavi during the In the Heights original Broadway run as well. In the 2021 movie, however, they take on the more minor roles of the Mr. Softy Guy and the Piraguero. Hey, I tell you, I run this town. Piragua, Piragua. Just some 125 Piragua. But the Easter eggs don't stop there. You can also catch a quick glimpse of Miranda's parents during Breathe. And in a fun little nod to Hamilton, Mr. Rosario gets to listen to You'll Be Back while on hold.
before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Bird Lady – Mary Poppins Returns Feed the birds. Tums the bird. To understand this detail, we first have to go back to the 1964 Mary Poppins film, where the protagonist sings a song called Feed the Birds. Naturally, it's about a bird lady who, you guessed it, tries to keep the many birds fed on the steps outside of St. Paul's Cathedral. Feed the birds, that's what she cries, while overhead her birds fill the skies. While her character wasn't brought back for the 2018 sequel, the filmmakers didn't forget about her. Because when Jack cycles past the great building at the start of the film, a flock of pigeons takes flight. It's a sweet and fitting moment if we've ever seen one. Practically perfect in every way. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.